Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and uh, this is part three of an interview series with Jesus. We've been uh, uh, interviewing saints on a playlist called Mentoring in the Heavenlies, and you'll see that in a description tag underneath this video as part of a playlist that this uh, video is on. So this is part three. I encourage you to see part one and part two before you see this video, but if you've watched part one and part two, well, welcome uh, to uh, video part three. Uh, sorry for the lighting, it's a bit yellow. Um, so um, welcome Jesus. Uh, Jesus is uh, in a uh, funny sort of uniform. Uh, it's a bit surprising uh, and uh, and uh, he just shows off his personality with this, this uh, colourful shorts on and like uh, it's uh, like a Hawaiian T-shirt and stuff and uh, he's uh, pretty colourful. He's pretty happy and uh, he he says hello uh, to Lou. Hello, Jesus. How are you today? I'm uh, especially <laughs> happy... Um, Looking forward to these questions today. Looking forward to in, uh, ministering to individual hearts on earth. And uh, and I'm happy that uh, there's uh, one individual watching th that I, I really want to touch his heart. And there's the mm -hmm. whole of heaven watching. So uh, I'm very uh, happy. I'm in the business of touching hearts. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. That's beautiful. Well, you touched my heart yesterday because I can't still forget I'm loved without doing nothing. So I keep reminding myself over and over again. So it's sinking in gradually. And, so and, and, and with your questions, go question one to question ten today. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's Matthew's new rule. You, so you, we are you, I, you, you forgot yesterday, you were just asking questions and uh you're forgetting to say question one. So so I would question one is it. what what's question one? My first question, number one, Matthew, what was your primary message during the Sermon on the Mount? Uh, so uh the Sermon on the Mount uh message was this is uh what was uh preached uh to you for thousands of years, and this is what's getting preached now. Uh you were told to uh, love your neighbor and curse your enemy, I, I tell you now, bless your enemy and stuff. Uh, if you look at a woman with lust, I tell you that you've already committed adultery. So I was just uh, bringing forth uh, the new laws of the kingdom and uh, the new laws uh, that I brought forth uh, in all my preaching, not just a sermon in the mount, was the law of love. It, it's uh, uh, my laws, uh, the commandments that I brought forth were uh, how how to love your fellow brethren. I had, um, you know, at least 50 commandments on how to love your fellow man. And um, the Sermon on the Mount was over 12 hours. Uh, it would have uh, been uh, 20 or 30 pages uh, in the Bible instead of three pages in the Bible. Um, both... Uh, both Matthew and, and the other disciple who mentioned a bit of the Sermon on the Mount in his gospel, I summarised what was said, but there, there was a lot said on that day, this whole a mountain of people, and I spoke for a long time. And uh, uh, you notice uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, people had come from all different countries, it says uh, in Matthew 4, the end of Matthew 4, And when I saw a big crowd had gathered, I went up onto a mountain and began to preach. So um, Sermon on the Mount isn't uh, for non-Christians. It's for followers that have come from other countries and sought me out. So they, they were for people who believed in me, who knew of my reputation. Uh, so it is uh, possible uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit uh, to obey my commands and to obey, to obey my teaching. And the purpose of uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
Sermon on the Mount is like my manifesto. It's my call to duty. Thank you, Jesus. So my second question is, why is there so much emphasis on love? Because throughout this 50 commandments, it keeps coming back to love. And how can we live in love? Uh, so love is, is the answer. Love is the most purest form of emotion. Um, you know, the Beatles, Matthew, uh, sings uh, this song. Uh, he's had other saints sing this song. All you need is love. Uh, and the Beatles really distilled it uh, with that song that uh, love breaks through, love is the answer. Love is like the uh, perfect oil to grease the wheels. Like love, it, it, it breaks through everything. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, two countries can come together through love uh, who have been battling for centuries. Uh, if love is shown with humility. Uh, so uh, love is uh, demonstrated uh, with all my uh, commandments and parables. I don't think you're really an effective follower of mine if you don't become loving. And uh, the converse is true. Matthew's care today uh, is a very loving person and caring for people and uh, she grew up as a Catholic girl going to Catholic school and stuff. And she has a basic understanding of me being her saviour and me dying for her sins. She doesn't practice church. She doesn't go to church. But uh, when she dies, uh, she's coming to heaven. Um, and uh, she's just a loving individual. Uh, so there's a lot of individuals in the earth uh, who, who wouldn't be, say, they're practicing Christians who, who wouldn't. Uh, be churchgoers who, who wouldn't be religious in any way, but they're loving individuals and uh, they just express love wherever they go. Love love is the answer. Um, mm. uh, in 1 John, it says God is love. It also says uh, uh, he, he that uh, hates his brother does not know me. And uh, John says, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? You've never seen God. And you've seen your brother, so um, I, I would uh, I tell each listener uh, uh, if you want to do some research about uh, me and hear hear some hard things, read the book of One John, and that'll wake you up. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I have you finished? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jesus. I wanted to ask you, I've um, come across a lady recently who used to be a Christian and turned to Muslim. And there's been few occasions of people moving from Christianity to other religion. How can you tell them that they're still loved? I just demonstrate that love uh, to them. So if they have a need, help the need. Uh, if you talk to them about life, and they've got something that's lacking, fill in the lacking part, uh, be loving to their children, uh, be understanding, be a good listener. Uh, there's a whole host of ways that you can love people. Um, she was already in my kingdom. She hasn't really left being a Muslim. Uh, the dictates of the Muslim faith align uh, very well with Christianity. And uh, and so just uh, continue loving her, encouraging her. Uh, from time to time, you can say that I love her and uh, uh, when it's appropriate. Um, and uh, just uh, don't let her feel in any way that she's rejected me and she's come away from me. Uh, and uh, just display your love and affection in appropriate uh, good ways. Thank you, Jesus. So number two, or number three question. What do you want us to understand about the miracle of feeding the 5,000? Well, first of all, um, the, one of the times I fed the 5,000 people, uh, I'd, I preached for a whole day. People came out from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night, and it started getting dark. They... Uh, made themselves beds and stayed for the second day 
And on the second day, they shared all their food that they had left from the first day. They thought they were just coming out for one day. Uh, on the second day, all the food was shared. And on they stayed uh, the second night because I was pretty interesting to listen to. They stayed the third day and it was time to go. But uh, there was no food and everyone was tired. And uh, so I had to do the miracle. The miracle was... Uh, not to be put in the Bible, not to make a big thing of things. It was just something that was needed. Uh, so one little boy came with his two fish and five loaves, and he was thinking he was just going to help us disciples and me, me mm -hmm. and the disciples to have something to eat. Mm -hmm. he, he never knew that his food was going to be used to feed the 5,000. And he's constantly um, mentioned uh, in preaching and uh, he's so happy in heaven. He's a grown man now. Uh, his testimony is in heaven. But the message is I can take a little thing. I can take just one video uh, that a person does YouTube and uh, I can blow it up and have thousands of people listen to it and thousands of people affected by it. one of Matthew's videos talking about the consequences of uh, being a prostitute, seeing prostitutes uh, blew up and has had 82,000 people uh, listen to it. And, uh, and so someone can be uh, just a little person just with their little fish and five loaves and uh, doing uh, videos that affect 20 to 50 people each time. And then I can take one of those videos and make it go to 100,000. And uh, we can have one of those events where you fed the 5,000. So um, it's an inspirational story. Um, there, there's people like Heidi Baker who have multiplied food. Uh, Matthew's mother mm -hmm. uh, was catering one time and she had uh, beef or chicken she had either she was served um consecutively or like uh separately beef and chicken you had a choice of beef and chicken and when she went to serve the beef was off or something mm -hmm. wrong with beef so she had to serve just chicken um and she served chicken but she had enough for everyone the chicken had multiplied um so she's had a multiplication miracle. It's often when something is needed and uh, and there's love involved. So Heidi Baker has had, um, you know, hundreds of people come for dinner and she's only had dinner for eight people and uh, she started serving and it's gone to the hundreds of people. So um, it happens, but you can't uh, you can't really do a multiplication miracle. Uh, if you're just going to make money out of it, like you can't prepare food for 10 people and start selling it uh, for $10 a meal and, and me multiply it a hundred times so you can make $10,000. I guess if you needed to raise money for your charity or something, uh, I might do something like that, but it uh, normally happens when there's a need and there's love involved. Um, but uh, you can take uh, the... Uh, boy uh, multiplying things and uh, take it personally and say that you can just be a little person with your giftings and it can have a far-reaching effect. Thank you, Jesus. That's really useful. I never knew that that could happen. So it's good to know that it's happening in people's life. What happened on that day with the 5,000, two loaves of fish and five berries is really good. Can you elaborate on the significance of walking on water and Peter's experience in this event? So uh, I was, uh, the, the boat uh, was buffeted, it said that the boat was coming back to pick me up because I'd been on the mountain to pray. And um, I got sick of waiting for the boat. I could see it out there uh, uh, through the clouds and... Uh, uh, I had uh, the ability to walk on water, so I just did that. Uh, the disciples thought I was a ghost. Uh, uh, that being in scripture means that there's actually ghosts 
ghosts do exist mm. and some people don't believe that ghosts exist, but they do. And the disciples thought I was a ghost. And Peter uh, said, if if it's really you, let me uh, give me the command. And I said, come. And Peter walked on, the, on my word. He walked on the word, come. And uh, if you walk on my word, uh, it'll be effective, like the promises of God. You can quote the promises of God at situations and uh, it, it'll create a miracle. So um, Peter walked on my word and then got scared. And like anyone would get mm. scared with the waves and the boisterous waves and stuff, he started to sink. When he started to sink, I zipped across the water 20 feet and picked him up and then uh, I picked him up and gave him a bit of a rebuke which is in the Bible and then uh, we walked back on top of the water back to the boat so I didn't drag Peter through the water back to the boat but we walked on water back to the boat so Peter walked on water twice uh, once where he sank and once with me back to the boat the first time he walked on water he walked on my word he, he mm. my, my word come actually allowed for the miracle. Uh, the second uh, time he walked back to the boat, he walked hand in hand with the word of God. And either way, you can uh, survive um, situations uh, in life. You can either walk on my promises and quote promises uh, to your problems and situations and have your problems dissipate according to the word of God, or you can just have relationship with me and talk to me and have me uh, talk you through a situation and come with you through a situation. So many times um, Matthew has been in, in bed, not been able to get to sleep and he just start a conversation with me. Uh, sometimes he's struggling in bed, being worried uh, that he can't get to sleep. And they'll quote the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the verse will get him through and get him to sleep. Uh, so uh, there's multiple ways of getting through things, quoting my scripture or walking hand in hand with me. I hope uh, that helps. Um, Peter was picked on a lot uh, by uh, modern preachers. And uh, Peter was uh, the only one to walk on water twice. And uh, and um, it's also uh, someone whose shadow healed people. Hmm. Yes, yeah, I'm finished. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You yeah. mentioned fear. That obviously when Peter was fearful, that was when he started what question saying. Is this one? Is number this a made up question. No, it's still it's a made up question. It's part of the previous one. <laughs> uh, it's a follow up question right, from yeah, the follow up, but not a number Spread... on it. No, not a number on it. <laughs> so my follow up question is: There's so many times we've followed your promises, and in the process of following your promises, we fear, we're afraid whether this is going to happen or not. Is he, is he okay? Yeah, that's, for your, that's, that's, your that's uh, you, you know, many times, many times you have thoughts of fear. That's just Satan speaking through your mind. Uh, Satan doesn't say, hi, this is Satan speaking. Uh, you're going to fail. You're not going to get that job. You, you just get a thought. I don't think I'm going to get this job. Um, but, you, you don't get told by Satan, hi, oh, this is Satan, you're not going to get that job. So Satan doesn't announce when he's speaking to you. So uh, many times it just comes from your own thought and uh, these fears uh, come from him. Um, there's natural fears that people have in the flesh and they might not think they're worthy or might not think they're good enough to get the job and they're nervous about that. They've got their own fears. Um, but um, the promises work. And if you double down on the promises, it should get you through your fear. Thank you, Jesus. So this is number five. Can you elaborate on the significance of walking? Oh, sorry. That's my previous question. Why did you choose to reveal your glory to Peter, James, and John on the mountain top? 
and what was the purpose? Um, just, I knew I was going to have a special moment. Uh, if uh, if if you were a Trump supporter and you you're invited uh, by Trump uh, to have lunch with Trump, and you had uh, three uh, close friends that had supported you in business and had been really good personal friends to you. If if you had the ability to invite them to the Trump lunch and you know that they are real are big Trump supporters, that would really bless them as within your means uh, to invite mm -hmm. them. Um, it would really bless them and they'd never forget it. Um, those, those three disciples were my closest disciples and uh, mm -hmm. I was going up on the mountain to have a meeting uh, with my father being led by the Holy Spirit and I wanted them to witness uh, meeting my father and having an intimate uh, time with him and Moses and Elijah a lot arrived. Oftentimes, saints are good conduits of God, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and so they arrived and had a talk. And uh, one of the disciples, uh, Matthew thinks it's Peter, said, "Let's build them a tabernacle and have a." Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everlasting meeting place for them and uh, but it was just a special time and uh, when you've got special friends you'll invite uh, special friends into that time the same as uh, this these interviews this is a special ability that Matthew has to bring saints voices to earth and you decided uh, let's interview Jesus this is really a special time like uh, it uh, it's like the same as going up into the mountaintop. Uh, if there was an effective way of promoting videos, the whole of the world would uh, really benefit uh, from this video. Uh, but um, there's just you know thirty or fifty people uh, that watch on Matthew's YouTube that watch this. But it's the same thing: inviting people into something special. Thank you, Jesus. What message were you trying to convey, number six, Atio, through the choice of a donkey for your entry, entrance into Jerusalem? Well, uh, it, it was prophesied uh, that uh, the Messiah uh, would come in uh, riding a, a virgin donkey. Uh, so uh, sometimes, sometimes I had to do uh, something uh, to fulfill a prophecy, I, I didn't ordinarily uh, travel on a donkey, and uh, we picked that donkey up. Uh, it hadn't been ridden, and uh, someone must have, uh, uh, Matthew doesn't know, but uh, someone must have gone and uh, give the man uh, money uh, for his donkey afterwards. Um, but um, uh it, it was a sig signified uh, humility. You remember uh, pictures of my mother uh, traveling on a donkey when she went mm -hmm. to Bethlehem. It was the arrival of uh, something great. It was the arrival of the Messiah. And uh, you remember mm -hmm. uh, as I entered uh, Jerusalem, they were throwing palm branches and uh, welcoming me as the Messiah. And, in, in that special celebration, because it was biblical and I did what prophecy said, uh, people welcomed me on that day as the Messiah and I was recognised. Um, little did they know uh, that a week later they'd be crucifying me. Mm. The same people that welcomed me uh, were shouting crucify him a week later. Thank you, Jesus. How can that be related to our Christian journey? Well, um, uh, in in life, uh, you may be celebrated or rejected or treated harshly, and uh, uh, no matter uh, what happens uh, to you in life, uh, the promises in the Bible are real, real and... Uh, I was aware that I was going to be crucified, um, but uh, it did have to be established uh, in Israel that I was 
the promised one. And uh, it was important for certain people uh, to recognize that. And the individuals in the crowd that were touched, that even when I was crucified, they still believed. And uh, individuals like that uh, got a visitation from me or saw me after the resurrection and their faith was blessed. Uh, so it's important uh, for you to uh, decide uh, what you called for, hear from me or hear from the Holy Spirit what your purpose is and uh, go on with the purpose. No matter what happens, uh, no matter if friends leave you, uh, no matter mm. if people betray you, uh, no matter if people speak out against you, no matter if people write uh, bad comments on your videos or on your book reviews, no matter what happens, no matter who deserts you, uh, no matter who says uh, bad things about you, no matter who attacks you, it's important that you go on with your mission. And uh, part of uh, the mission of uh, being the Messiah was to be recognised at that point at the, as the Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. Number eight question is, what did you mean when you said, this is my body and this is my blood? And how should your followers understand these words? Well, it's really important uh, that people um, recognize that that really was my body and that really mm. was my blood. And I was laying down my blood and, and, and my body uh, to be sacrificed. And uh, it wasn't just... Uh, uh, Signal wasn't just something that signifies my body and blood. If you take communion, it actually is my body and blood. And uh, there's certain people that teach on uh, the communion. Uh, Joseph Prince, uh, 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 Derek Prince, uh, teaches on communion and uh, has a good teaching. Uh, communion uh, can bring health uh, to your body and uh, and can bring you closer. Uh, to me and relationship and uh, so it is a good process and I recommend uh, people uh, taking communion in their home um, so uh, I I laid down my flesh uh, I laid down my blood there's power in the blood there's uh, when when you're exercising demons and stuff uh, it's uh, can be really useful to quote the blood um, and use the blood um, to uh, do things. Um, uh, Matthew doesn't have like a tremendous understanding of these things, uh, so it's hard for me to uh, go into great detail, but uh, he recommends uh, the book uh, by uh, Derek Prince on 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 uh, the blood and the uh, the flesh of uh, communion. Thank you, Jesus. Number nine question, why did you choose to heal the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath, knowing it will provoke the Pharisees? Why did I do that? Yeah. Um, some would think I was inspired to provoke a Pharisee, so I didn't go out of my time. I didn't go out of my way to provoke Pharisees all the time I just did what I was led to do by the Holy Spirit um <clears throat> I saw the man with a withered hand people would come and go in the temple uh, he'd be there one minute and gone the next and uh he came to me and uh he it's compassion that led me to do that all, all nearly all my miracles were done in in spirit of compassion and um why should he uh, continue his life uh, with a withered hand uh, being second-class citizen uh, when it was within my power to do it, uh, when it was within my miracle set to be able to uh, fix his hand? Matthew was in India and um, and uh, he, he was at a church and they were leaving a church and one of the men in the church approached one of the people in Matthew's team with a withered hand and um, he just reached out to the guy's hand and touched his hand and 
prayed for him and he's just a Western Christian with no power and the man's withered hand uh, got better. It was a real miracle uh, for Matthew's friend and uh, he was really touched that he was able to perform that miracle. And the guy was from a poor church and he just expected these Christian visitors to be able to give him a miracle. Uh, of course, he came in faith. He, he got his miracle. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll find um, when, uh, when I got the report uh, that John had died, I, I withdrew in a boat and then a crowd gathered on the other side and it says in scripture, and then he had compassion on them and uh, mm -hmm. went and healed all the sick. And then that was the day <clears throat> that uh, fed the 5,000. Uh, but uh, with 5,000 men, women and children, probably about 15,000 people, I had compassion on them and healed their sick. There would have been about 1,000 sick people amongst the group like that and uh, so you can imagine how much time it would take to lay hands on a thousand people and then i preached to them then i fed the five thousand uh, then i fed the fifteen thousand with a miracle um but the whole day started uh because i wanted to go and cry about my my uh, cousin dying and and my prophet um it was one of my saddest days uh in my ministry and I had every right to be by myself. I just wanted to be myself. But on on my saddest day, I did some of the biggest miracles. And the end of that day, I walked on water. So um, that was just one day in ministry. But uh, the important words in, in that transaction, when you're reading in the Bible, and he had compassion on them. So uh, miracles, healing, uh, healing, good healing doesn't come out of uh, pride or, or gifting. Uh, good healings come out of the, the emotion of compassion. Thank you, Jesus. So what can we learn from that scenario? What can we learn from what? From that scenario, what can we take away from that scene as Christians? What scene? Of the healing of the withered hand. Uh, uh, having compassion, doing it not because you wanted to provoke the Pharisees, but you did it because it's in your power to be able yeah. to do it. So, so and it's, important, it's important to always uh, be used as a vessel for me. So if uh, someone comes to you and they have a need for money to supply the money, if someone comes to you with a need for food for you to supply the food. Uh, if someone comes to you with questions for you to answer their questions, it's important for you as a Christian to be a vessel of me and be a conduit of heaven to earth. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, it's strange that no matter what you have, I'm able to use you uh, to meet the needs of people, people who really need to speak and really need a friend can find you and you can be that friend. People who who need uh, $50 to pay a bill uh, can get $50 off you. People who, who need uh, someone to eat with and someone to keep them company can be that. Uh, people who've got questions about the faith and if you're a teacher, you can teach them. So it's important to always be available. And uh, there's many uh, Christians in the world, but not a lot of them that are available, that uh, surrendered their lives and put themselves in a position to be available. There's needs and requirements everywhere. I could have just uh, walked through the temple and ignored that guy. I could have just said, well, that's his problem. It's the Sabbath today. I can't heal. Mm. But I recognised the need and addressed his problem despite what the Pharisees think about the Sabbath. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I think this is one picking from today's message, be available. You need to make yourself available for other people. You need not to think just about yourself, taking selfishness 
out of your life and remembering that there are other people around you that need more than you actually need at this current time. Uh, so a, how... a lot of people a lot of people just don't see. They they haven't got eyes for the poor. They haven't got eyes for the homeless. Uh they 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 haven't that they're just not available and uh surrendering your life and and making a solemn prayer to us to say that uh, you want to be available for people will allow needs to come to you. Uh, when you manifest the glory of the Lord, when you walk around with the glory of the Lord, needs manifest to you. Uh, so it may be different for Matthew than the average person, but uh, you can reach a stage where people with needs want to approach you and ask you for help. Thank you, Jesus. And will this be the same for people listening in heaven as well, making themselves available? Or how can that be applied in heaven? Uh, there's so many uh there's so many people with needs in heaven. There's uh you know, uh people in the higher realms understand this because in the higher realms uh you get taught about stewardship and stewarding your gift. Uh, and so people from the higher realms are used to meeting the needs of people in lower realms, but uh, people in the lowest realm are sort of uh, are more complacent and uh, somewhat selfish and uh, think only of themselves um, and uh, how they can be better. And uh, so you'd, uh, it, it would be uh, helpful if uh, you uh, press this button uh, that's on your iPad now, uh, I want to be used, I want to be more useful. And if you press that button, heaven uh, will tell you uh, what you need to do and how you can help people. You can uh, produce fruit and be a helpful person in ROM 1 and progress uh, into ROM 2 and ROM 3 uh, from uh, becoming good. Uh, so many people... Uh, are just happy uh, doing their job in heaven. And uh, although it's helping people, you could help a lot more by switching jobs and doing other things. Uh, so um, I'm glad you asked that question to Lou because it just helps uh, facilitate uh, change in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. My last question, number 10. When you said whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother, what message were you conveying about the nature of spiritual family? Uh, I was mainly addressing uh, the fact that uh, they'd come out and said, your mother and sister and brother are outside. And, uh, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to say to the listeners who heard that, uh, that uh, everyone is important to me. It was like a message of include, inclusiveness, with me, um, I didn't want the people I was with that heard that uh, to think that uh, my bro brother and mother and sister were more special uh, than them. And uh, so I was uh, covering that and saying, you know, everyone who does the will of my father is my brother, sister. And, um, but I also mean it uh, for you uh, listening. I mean it. Uh, for uh, you listening on earth and you listening in heaven, uh, as you do my will, as as you submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you become my brother and sister. And um, and you may think that I was just some uh, Jewish uh, rabbi that died on a cross and died for your sins, and you may accept uh, that I died for your sins and you may have progressed uh, somewhat uh, in your Christian relationship and Christian, but you don't fully believe I'm your brother. You don't fully believe that I'm your friend. You don't fully believe that I love you and would do anything for you. And uh, some of you need to recognize that I love you like a brother. Uh, and uh, you may not have a brother or a sister. You may not have like a family sort of relationship or have anything uh, to compare this to. <clears throat> but if you're listening to this, I really love you and uh, I've got a purpose for your life and there's a purpose uh, for you listening to this and there's a purpose uh, for your life and the Holy Spirit 
uh, knows your purpose. If, if you're in heaven, uh, you can press the button on your iPad, what is my purpose? And uh, and uh, heaven will communicate. Um, uh, if you're on earth and you're listening <coughs> to this, you could possibly buy Matthew's book <coughs> off Amazon called Finding Your Purpose in Christ. And uh, and uh, that could uh, really help you. Um, so yeah, I I meant uh, uh, that the people following me and listening to me would become close to me, as close as a brother, as a sister, or a mother. And uh, you've got that choice uh, to follow me and listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for your time and all the great responses. It's really blessed my heart, and I hope people listening as well are blessed. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if uh, you um, enjoyed this uh, teaching, if you enjoyed this uh, interview, uh, please press like, and that really encourages Matthew. Uh, he, he likes seeing the likes. If you've got a comment uh, on this interview, uh, and Matthew loves to see comments. Uh, I really encourage you uh, to write a comment and Matthew reads all his comments. And if this is the first interview you've seen uh, from Matthew and and you liked it, uh, please uh, consider subscribing to his channel to see more interviews. He likes subscribers. So may uh, my, my spirit uh, work on your life May you grow in your confidence and in your intimacy with me. God bless.